And for the first time viewers, this is a 2004 Arctic Fox with a 2015 Chevy Silverado. This unit came equipped from the factory with an onboard generator. It's an Onan, camp power, 2500 watt. Some of the things I really like about this generator is it's easy and convenient to run. I just push a button and it starts right up. So here we are, about 10 yards away from the generator, and I think that's pretty commonplace. You get into a lot of campgrounds, and you're not parked really far away from your generator. You can definitely hear it running from here. This generator has 132 hours on it. That's not many for a 17 year old generator. A big reason for that, it's just too noisy. Even if I pull into a parking lot and I want to run it while I'm having lunch so I can have my air conditioner on, everybody is going to know that I'm inside that camper. If people are out trying to enjoy a day, park, this is just way too loud. 10 yards away from the generator while it's running, we're sitting at about 68 decibels. That's pretty loud. To get an idea of the ambient noise here in the park, just sitting at about 42 decibels. Now don't get me wrong, I really do like the generator. It can run my air conditioner, toaster, coffee pot, it's up to any task that I put it to. The problem with it is, it's just too loud. So where I do find myself running the generator, usually truck stops. If I get there and there's already diesel trucks running, maybe their reefer units are working, I'll turn it up, have lunch. But if I pull into a campground, parking lot, or sitting on the side of the street, I usually don't turn this generator on, which is gonna bring us to my next generator. This is a 3,500 watt Predator generator from Harbor Freight. This is my everyday generator. It'll run 10 to 11 hours on a tank, two and a half gallons. It'll handle the air conditioner, toaster, everything that the Onan does, and it does it better. They advertise this unit as being 57 decibels. Let's turn it on, see how it compares to the Onan. So 10 paces, 30 yards, same as the Onan. Where are we sitting now? About 59 decibels. Much quieter and a lot more comfortable to be around. So if I'm here at a park, I don't feel bad about running that thing at all. I know that I'm not interfering on anybody's day. I'm not intrusive. Having a generator that's quiet, that's a really big benefit. It's been hot this summer and I need to use the air conditioner a lot. I'm a big guy. You can see I'm already sweating in this video. So between the Onan and the Predator, hands down it's the Predator. It can handle the air conditioner, toaster, coffee pot, anything that I throw at it. And it's so much quieter. But the Predator, it's not perfect. I still need to plug it in with the cable. Also have to have adapters for it. It's got its limitations, but I think the benefits, they outweigh the negativities. Another pretty big disadvantage, I gotta carry this thing on front basket. I could put it in the back of the truck, but I already carry my e-bike back there, and I, I don't want to smell the gas. So I run this basket. This sticks out about 24 inches, so I have to be really careful when I'm pulling into a parking lot that I don't hit a parked car in front of me, or even at a stoplight tried to alleviate some of them problems by putting these flags off of an ATV snowplow. What really helped is this front mounted camera. So when I'm pulling into a parking lot, if I'm going to pull in front of a car, I can just say show video and the camera is going to come on. It's a super handy feature to have. I absolutely love it. Not only am I carrying a front basket, but I also carry extra fuel in the back here. Right in between the grill and the sewer hose box, I carry an extra two gallon gas can. I can get anywhere between eight and 10 hours off that two gallons. 
Arctic Fox from the factory comes with two 30 pound tanks. I took the 30s out, put two 20s in. Give me a little bit more storage. I think another good test is to see the difference between these two things running inside. So first, let's start the Onan. Now I'm sure you can hear it. It's pretty loud. Inside the camper right now, it's anywhere between 69 and 70 decibels. So the remote start on the Onan, no doubt that makes things easy. And Predator, you got to drag out the cables, go outside and start it up. But here's the thing, you can also add on a wireless remote control, and that's what I did. There she is, can you hear it? Just a smooth rumble. Let's check out the noise level on this. So it's sitting right at about 46. It's really not that intrusive. I don't notice that generator running. And I have no problems having that thing go eight, 10 hours at a crack. So the ambient noise level inside the camper here, it's about 40 to 41 decibels. So the generator of choice for me, it's gonna be the Predator. I've owned a Honda 2000 watt in the past. It was nice. The Honda can power the air conditioner, but you have to turn all your other loads off. So you can't have the converter charging your batteries while you're running your air conditioner. So even though I got the two generators, there's still one other way that I can run my air conditioner. Let me show you that. Let's first start under the hood for this one. So let's talk about the 3000 watt inverter in the back of the camper. That inverter is powered by this solenoid right here. I ran number two wire from the batteries all the way back to the camper and it connects with an Anderson plug. This solenoid right here is controlled by this relay powered by my headlights. So why do I have powered off my headlights? Well, Chevy's decided to make the alternator as efficient as possible. It won't put out max power all the time. There's a couple of conditions where it will. One of those is with the headlights. You can hear the solenoid click. So by hooking it up to the headlights, I'm ensuring that my alternator is putting out the most power it can. I installed the inverter right underneath the sink. Let me show you. So I wish I could tell you what brand inverter it was, but I don't remember. I bought it a couple of years ago off Facebook Marketplace. What I do know is it's a 3000 watt inverter with about a 4000 watt spike. It was also important to me that I found an inverter that had a remote on off switch. Let me show you why. I hope to never have to get back down in there to do any work on it. So I mounted this switch right here. The inverter plugs into shore power and that's how I get 120 volts. Switch is right here. This switch was originally for the water heater. I added a second one. This is how I turn my converter on and off. If my inverter's off, we can turn the converter on. Now shore power or the generator is going to charge the batteries. If I turn the inverter on, I want to shut the converter off because otherwise my batteries, well they'll just charge my batteries. It'll be a constant loop and I'll lose power. First, what we're gonna do is turn on the truck so you guys can see what happens to the voltage. What I'm gonna do is put you guys underneath the sink, pointing at the inverter, so you can see the wattage draw when I turn the air conditioner on. You guys can see right now the inverter, it's at zero watts. Nothing's pulling from it. First, I'm gonna turn on the fan that's gonna start drawing some power. Once the battery and alternator is used to the draw, I'm gonna turn the compressor on. You guys are gonna see a pretty significant spike at that time. were able to see the spike I imagine it was pretty significant might even had a warning light come on but 
I don't think we got anywhere close to overloading it because I can run the air conditioner and the coffee pot, no problems. I also leave this running long enough that the compressor cycles, kicks on and off. I've never had an issue with it. To show you how cold it's actually getting, let's take a look at that. So I'm gonna use this temperature gauge, point it up through the AC. We'll see how cold this unit's getting. All right, so it looks like it's in the 40s, which means we're sitting about 30 degrees cooler than the outside air temperature. So I don't come to campgrounds like this just because I don't like the noise. And I don't want to hear people's generators running all day long. So when I get into a national forest in the middle of nowhere, cicadas. Ugh. So the last thing that I want to hear when I'm out boondocking in the middle of nowhere is a generator running all day. You guys do you though. Whatever floats your boat makes you happy. One thing I do want to mention is I'm not a professional or an expert in any of this stuff. I learned trial and error, and I've wrecked a lot of stuff along the way. So before you guys get in, start doing anything with your wiring, do a little research first. Well, this video is about coming to an end. Episode number 14. I think we finally got it in the bag. I wanted to mention you guys turning this channel into something pretty special. A lot of good tips and comments down below. In fact, this episode was a request from one of my very first subscribers. So keep that up. I've got a trip planned in the future. I'll let you know more about it as I go. In the meantime, you know what to do. Be kind, be honest. We'll see you down the road.